Hey everybody, I am back with a new paludarium build for a lungless salamander species, and I will be working with cave salamanders this time. I've had my eye on some captive bred cave salamanders for quite a while, and so I wanted to build a, a habitat for them. So one of these lucky 40 gallon empty slots here will get to house them. This is gonna be, I'm gonna to endeavor to build the mouth of a cave or opening of a cave. So it's gonna be a lot less plants, a lot more rocks, a little bit different than what I'm used to, but really looking forward to this one. I think it's different and differentiated. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is my 40 gallon breeder. I have already drilled holes um, for the bulkheads. So if you wanna see how I do that, watch pretty much any of my other videos, almost all of my DIYs. Um, for paludariums have me doing this and you know you can see how I do it in there um, but this is the return here and this is where the water will come kind of cascade out um, so you know trying to think about uh, how I'm going to do that but that's the return uh, the intake right there and as you can see the intake is about I have to have minimum three to three and a half four inches of water in there which is good I don't want too much but enough um, and then here, this is the return. So water will have several inches above the water before it kind of hits the water line. So I'm gonna try to make a cool cascading effect, we'll see. First things first, as usual, using the A-Crate light diffuser, let's build the framework around this so foam can stick to it and hold thing, elements of the hardscape in place. Wire snippers or whatever these are, wire cutters, whatever these things are I'm using, that's what I use, I'm just, Snipping here, I'm using a, a measuring tape to figure out the sides in the background and the bottom. So, you know, not rocket science, it's kind of the boring part, but you know, a very essential part of the build. As you can see, the fits pretty nicely. This is just one of the side pieces. So really basic, but gonna get these in here in silicone and we will move on to the next steps, which will be the wonderful foaming. Okay, so we have now siliconed in the frame, as you can see here. Um, you know, using the A-Crate light diffuser, I just took pieces I had and did as best I could to do the sides of the background. I cut spots out for the intake and the return, as well as doing the ground, because there was gonna be quite a lot of rocks in here. Um, and I'm really not sure how I'm gonna do the hardscape yet, and I'm gonna hold off foaming. See, these are the rocks I'm gonna put in. Um, so I got to figure out how I want to do the background. I want to minimize the foam and carving. So I'm going to have to be crafty and figure out a smart way to do this. But, uh, this is the kind of rock I'm going to use and hopefully it looks cool. We'll have to see, you know, I mean, it's, uh, going to be interesting. So what you're looking at here is some styrofoam, uh, just from Home Depot. These things are probably like four feet long and I don't even know, two feet wide, maybe and like an inch and a half or two inches thick. Um, what I'm going to do. And I'll, and I'll show you what I mean here. As you can see, I've been trying to use these big rocks that I have. These are really cool rocks. They're super heavy, but I don't know that I have enough of them and I don't know how it's really gonna look. Uh, I wanna build, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do the sides in the back, but I wanna build a cave. And I, you know, I just don't think that using the expanding foam and whatever colors is gonna really match anything like this. I, I feel like, I'm not gonna get the right shapes. So I'm gonna attempt something. This could prolong this whole process by several weeks, but um, I am actually going to use this. I'm gonna use my hot knife to cut it and I'm going to um, try dry locking and painting it and, and trying some methods, using some sand in the mix with the dry lock. Try to make a limestone-ish type of look to make caves. Um, it may not work. It may be a total waste of time, but. I really want to try my hot knife and, and try it on this stuff. Um, and in that case, I really won't use that many rocks. Um, I still might, you know, the color's close enough, I still might be able to use some of these rocks in the front of the scape. And I'm gonna to try to match it to the color, but I, I just, I, I don't know that I'm gonna really get there. Um, but anyways, um, given that I want this entire thing to look like a cave, I think I'm gonna try this first. And if it fails, you know, wasted like 35, 40 bucks. But it is what it is, let's check it out. All right, well, this doesn't look that cool. I'll tell you that. This was a pain in the you-know-what. Um, so what I did was I basically would break off pieces of the styrofoam and start stacking it in places. Um, and so I kind of built this. As you can see, that's where the water will come out. Um, it'll be like a cave stream, and I have to carve all this. I have carved some of this stuff, which I think is okay, and I've put foam in between and I'll let it expand and have to give it overnight to kind of um you know 
well, some of it I packed down, but, um, and have more of a cohesive look, because obviously there's pieces, but, um, you know, I think this could look pretty cool the way I have it carved. I might do some more. I'm going to have to carve all this still. I haven't done any of that. I've only carved the sides. Um, and like I said, uh, there's some areas here where there's foam, so I'm going to have to carve the foam. I'm going to add some more foam and make sure it looks seamless so it doesn't look crappy. Um, this is a pain in the butt. I don't know if I'll do this again, and I'm really not sure how it's going to come out, to be honest with you. Uh, I may be doing this one over, so. Um, but, you yeah, know, let's see how it turns out. All right, so I am kind of okay with this, to be honest with you. Um, I went ahead and I used some tools that I was talking about, my hot knife and a hot wire, which is an attachment to the hot knife, and I'll show you that here in a second. So as you can see, there's the knife and there is the wire, and it's a, you can see it right there. And it cuts right through it like butter. So, you know, it, it's, it's fine, I think. It, it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm not really happy with the sides. I had to piece them together. Um, I put some foam. I'm gonna try to make it look seamless. Um, and it will end up looking seamless if you see this video. Otherwise, you'll never see this. So um, I'm gonna wait for this foam to really expand and cure and then just carve it lightly on top and um, try to carve a little bit of detail and then just kind of make sure it all looks kind of seamless like I said, and, um, you know, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, as you can see, get out here, there's the water will come out of there, um, and, you know, kind of cascade down here into the water area. Um, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put in some of these spots. Um, probably gonna have to do a little more carving under there, to be honest, it doesn't really look realistic. Um, so probably gonna have to do that, but, um, all that stuff over there is carved. You can't really tell what you can now. So um, you can see I carved detail into things. Um, you know, as you can see, it took a long time, pretty much all day, to do this and then clean up. Um, but uh, you know, we'll see. You know, it kind of looks looks pretty cool. Looks like a cave, and that's what I'm really going for. All right, so I am mixing up the. Um, paint, so the dry lock quick crete, um, and I've also put some sand in this, um, some play sand, um, to get a nice base layer. I'm trying to make a, uh, kind of trying to match that rock. I, I don't really know. I better put a little more terracotta in. I'm using four different um, types of uh, colors. I'm using buff, terracotta, brown, and charcoal, as, as well as the, the gray, so I guess it's five technically from the, um, from the stuff, and so this is it. I carved all the foam. And I'm gonna paint it, and um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint multiple coats so I get. I can um, carve some more once there's several coats of uh, quickcrete and dry lock on it. So I'm gonna try with the sand. I saw somebody doing this um, who did a really cool job. So I'm gonna test it out and see how it goes, and I will show you what it turns out like. All right. Well, the painting is done, and I am actually really psyched with this. Like, really, really, really happy with the way this turned out. I mean. Um, this actually looks really good. Um, this is, what I did was I put a base layer of that brownish color on it. Um, and then I did highlights with a terracotta mixed with a charcoal. And then I put some dark, dark spots um, in there. And then I did a dry brush technique and added some highlights of the terracotta, as you can see, and also the standard gray the white part right there that looks um if you can tell um and so yeah really liking this here's a shot from back here um i'm really really happy with this i mean this you have to really be here to see it um with you know i don't have good lighting in here right now i have to invest in some lights to make these videos a little bit better um but this is pretty awesome I'm really, really liking this. I mean, this looks really realistic. Um, like one of the better ones I've done. So, um, you know, I'll have better pictures when I get it under some lights. Um, but uh, this was 90% of the build was really the background. I mean, I really just need to let it dry for a couple of days and cure and then use some uh, sub substrate, uh, figure out the hardscape with the rocks. I don't even know how many plants I'm gonna put in here because it's probably just gonna have to be some moss and maybe some um, liverworts and maybe 
some aquatic plants, you know, maybe just some dwarf sag or something growing at the bottom. I mean, that's it. I mean, it's supposed to be a cave, so, um, you know, really don't want to overdo it with plants here, also I'm kind of defeating the purpose. Again, this is going to be housing those cave salamanders, and I think this is really, really going to be a cool setup. All right, so I ended up putting this um, paludarium on the middle rack next to my eastern newts and above my green frog and tadpole enclosure. I was going to put it up there, um, but I ended up not doing it. Um, I kind of want to show this one off a little bit. Um, I, you can still see, you know, the other ones will be pretty clear too when I put them, but I just really proud of this one. <laughs> so I just figured I'd showcase it um, in here. There's not going to be a lot of plants, but I really like the background. So I just figure I'll put it in the middle one. Um, you know, I am still going to put a bunch of rocks for the hardscape, you know, in addition to the substrate and the water, you know, it has to be, you know, above that. And then the water is going to come out of there. So I'm not sure how deep I'll have it, but um, I cleaned it out. I vacuumed it with a shop vac. Um, I cleaned it with rubbing alcohol, right cha. Um, I'm just trying to get it nice and ready. Um, I've got the filter ready. This is a Fluval 207. Um, so I took all the parts out, the sponges and everything, and I rinsed everything, um, put the rubber gasket on it, which is here. Um, so definitely, um, you know, in good, good shape here to start. I've also got the back ready. Um, which is, you know, I've got these, um, these hoses on, which are, uh, come with the flu valve. You, you can use vinyl hoses like that, which I usually do use, but you can see when they get really dirty with, um, algae and stuff. But anyways, um, you know, I don't like wasting stuff and I have so many of these cause I have literally so many flu valve 207s. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have seven of them right now. <laughs> so, um, anyways, use hose clamps, put it on. These are the, uh, barbed hose connectors. They, go into the, um, into the, uh, oh my gosh, the bulkheads. And um, you know, use some plumber's tape on here, um, like, like I usually do, just like with everything else, pretty simple. Um, it's just kind of a, 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 a format I follow and it's, it's easy now. Um, try to uh, not have a lot of excess hose like I do on this one. I'm gonna have to cut this one back because the flow on the frog tank is not that strong. I don't like it. So anyways, so that, that's about it for the plumbing. Pretty, um, Satisfied, I think, with the Seachem Fluorite Dark, which I'm using as my main substrate layer. Um, I think this is good. It kind of, if you look at it, it kind of matches the terrain in there, which is pretty cool. I, I like using this stuff. I use the other one too. If you see here, it's a, more of a red color, which would have been fine, but it's bright. So I kind of like this one. I think this one works well in here. This is gonna be the main layer. I may put a little sand here and there. I'm definitely gonna put a bunch of rocks um, that's really going to be it. I'm not going to put any um, any wood or anything because, again, this is a cave salamander habitat. So the main thing I'm going to be doing here is uh, putting some rocks and scaping it that way. Um, what I've decided is I'm going to uh, put some aquatic moss in there and also some dwarf sedge, um, which is a plant that I use um, in other enclosures. This is it. Um, this is in my greater sirenscape. I'm going to use this. Because I like the way that it um, it'll eventually carpet the bottom, um, and it'll you know I think it'll you know oxygenate the water a little bit. It'll help filter the water, and so um, and then I might get a little bit of moss to put on just the periphery here. Um, and I, I'm gonna have a I already installed the thing for a mist king, just one. I don't need one over here, just to spray over here. And if I have any moss that's not actually touching the water, so I'll do that. Um, and um, I think that's kind of how I'm gonna to plan to do this. I mean, I'm pretty close to having this done. Um, so let's uh, move on to the next step. So if you remember the rocks I was gonna use, this is them, but I've actually smashed them up with a hammer, um, a couple of the big ones, um, in order to get smaller ones because I don't wanna take away from the background of the scape. It looks really good. And so what I've done is I've hammered the rocks to smaller pieces to build smaller structures, as you can see. So I'll have small pieces like that. So I'm gonna to try to make it look pretty realistic. I think the color is as close as I'm gonna get it. But, um, but yep, th this is what I'm gonna end up using. And um, I think it's gonna look really cool. So let's check it out. Just me kind of messing around with some preliminary scape ideas with the rocks. And I, what I ended up coming up with is this. And this is the final scape that I came up with. May, may make a few tweaks, we'll see but uh, pretty happy with it. I think the real rocks stand out quite a bit. They're just a little bit lighter, but um, they, uh, you know, but after breaking them up, I think I got more of the shape that I wanted. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I think it looks pretty realistic for 
what I'm doing, given the size of the tank I'm working with. Um, I also stuffed some rocks back there where the, um, where the return is, uh, as you can see there a little bit, and um, hopefully that'll slow the water up. I want it to, I don't want it to blast out, but I definitely want it to come out. And so, um, again, this isn't gonna be a heavily planted tank, but we'll see. I'm gonna do a water test here, so let's, uh, let's see how that goes. Okay, so happy with the way that this is turning out with the water. There's no leaks. I like the way that the water's flowing out of this. Uh, water's a little cloudy. I had to do about seven or eight mini water changes. Remember, you gotta let the quickcrete and dry lock dry and cure for about a week. Um, I think the reason for the cloudiness is honestly because of the sea chem. Um, I actually, I, I don't know how many times I washed it, I can't even tell you, but there's always a little bit of cloudiness. So I'm gonna let it sit for a few days. Um, I'm gonna add some moss, just a little bit of terrestrial moss. I'm gonna add a little bit of um, liverworts, if I can find them, if not, just a little bit of terrestrial moss. I'm gonna get the aquatic plants, I'm gonna plant those, and then I'm gonna work on the cleanup crew, which will essentially be some snails and some ghost shrimp. Um, and then I might get a little bit of uh, springtails for the land if there's enough moss, but that's really it. And just kind of letting things establish for a while before I add the animals. All right, well, I went ahead and planted this tank. Um, like I said, I had ordered some dwarf sag, which you can see here, um, and it's planted throughout. Um, I've got it all over the place, kind of in the background too, in places. Um, can see quite a bit of it and usually it will sprout runners um, and it will grow up like a carpet although I've never really actually seen that or had it long enough for that to happen um, and I also planted uh, another aquatic plant which is flame moss um, it's everywhere in here um, and that will grow up over time I put it in spots some is out of the water I put a lot in here um, at the mouth here of the where the water comes out. Um, and then I just have a little bit kind of in the rocks here and there, um, just kind of, oops, it's another dwarf set. Right, uh, yeah, right there. There's more flame moss, it's a really cool plant. Um, and then I planted some terrestrial moss where it'll get sprayed a little bit. So you can see there's that water that's kind of popping out from the rocks. It, what it does is if you can see that, um, those little droplets, it, that actually will feed the terrestrial moss. This is the side that I'm concerned about, which, but I'm gonna have the mist king over here. Um, so, and that's it. I, I, you know, I said, I don't wanna really plant too much. I think some of the moss will start to grow anyways. Um, I can put more um, flame moss. I might actually put a little bit more right over there, like right in this area. But, um, you know, I don't wanna overdo this with plants because then it kind of defeats the purpose. But I do need some plants in here for the microfauna, which will be the snails and the shrimp. And I don't even need necessarily think I might, I might put a little bit of springtails on each clump of moss, maybe the little colony will form, but, um, but we'll see. So anyways, I've got it planted. I just got to make the lid and then get the microphone in here and then just let it go for a while and then get the animals. All right, so this is really the finished product. Everything is kind of done. I did the screen um, for the top. Um, I'm gonna have to probably cover this a little bit because something could crawl, potentially crawl out, but I can't cover the whole thing because that's where the Miss King will go and right through here, the, the nozzle. Um, and so these are the lights I use, they're Nikru, they have the right spectrum, they're LED lights, they're like 40, 50 bucks, something like that, I don't even know. Um, I just find the right one for the right size, you know, there's, it's not rocket science. Um, and that's about it. So I am going to probably get the cleanup crew uh, in the next couple days and put them in, um, give them a little while and then, or, you know, talk to the breeder, get the salamanders and start it up. But this is pretty much it in a nutshell. It wasn't um, a really crazy build, um, other than the background, which was crazy, but um, the rest of it was easy. I really like the way it turned out. You know, it's kind of minimalist for the rest of the scape. You know, there's some rocks and some things like that, but uh, I think this is pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely happy with this and I look forward to putting the animals in. Okay, everybody, so we got the Nerites in. There's two of them there. They're, these are big snails, too. I usually don't get them this big, but uh, I just got four. I don't think I need a lot. I got another one right there and another one right here. And then in the foreground, you can see a ghost shrimp. I've got a bunch, about 10 ghost shrimp in here. Um, to, again, to be the cleanup crew, I'm not adding any springtails because there is not enough places for them to live. I mean, I guess they could live on the moss, but... Um, you know, if I need to add them, I have a master culture, I can always add them. Got about 10 ghost shrimp, four nerites. I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm gonna let this go for a while, let them get acclimated, and I just need to add the salamanders. I'm gonna have to get them. I'm gonna get three or four cave salamanders. Uh, 
I might get some aquatic ones that are still haven't um, uh, grown, or I might get some adult ones. I'm not really sure. We'll see um, if, you've got, if I even have an option. But, um, but yeah, really happy with this one. I really appreciate you guys tuning in for this. Um, it's been a really fun build. It's different, you know, as you can see, you know, I've never made one that's just kind of all rock like this or looks like all rock. Um, and I'm really, really, really happy with the way that this one came out. I think the animals will do really well because it does mimic to some degree their natural environment. Um, and, uh, you know, I think for the next build, I'm gonna do a totally terrestrial one for another mole species of salamander. Maybe a spotted or a marbled, we'll see, I'm not sure yet. Um, but, uh, but more to come on that and other future builds. Um, I have at least two to three new future builds in terms of space. Um, but listen, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and bearing with me with my kind of low tech. You know, I've been building things like this for a long time, you know, really since, um, since I was a kid. But um, I've never really been putting them on the internet or YouTube or sharing them. So appreciate you guys bearing with me kind of with the, um, kind of the low tech that I have. I have a really cool camera. Um, that takes great pictures, but the video quality is not great. And the video quality of a phone is obviously not great either, but sometimes um, it does the, the trick to, to kind of get the point across of how to build some of these things and, and share it with you. So as I go forward and um, hopefully one day do more of these, I will be able to upgrade my equipment. And so thank you for bearing with me. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I look forward to um, building more of, uh, of these types of habitats and, and um, sharing them with you guys. So hope everyone has a great weekend.